Chapter 24, The Far-Reaching Influence of Our Publications, Power of the Pen. The pen is a power in the hands of men who feel the truth burning upon the altar of their hearts and who have an intelligent zeal for God balanced with sound judgment. The pen dipped in the fountain of pure truth can send the beams of light to dark corners of the earth, which will reflect its rays back, adding new power and giving increased light to be scattered everywhere. Life Sketches, page 214. The Press, God's Instrumentality. The press is a powerful means to move the minds and hearts of the people. The press is a powerful instrumentality which God has ordained to be combined with the energies of the living preacher to bring the truth before all nations, kindreds, tongues, and peoples. Many minds can be reached in no other way. Christian Experience, pages 225 to 27. The publishing branch of our cause has much to do with our prayer. I do desire that it shall accomplish all that the Lord designs it should. If our bookmen do their part faithfully, I know from the light God has given me that the knowledge of present truth will be doubled and trebled. Life Sketches, page 446 and 447. Influence of our publications. I have been shown that our publications should be printed in different languages and sent to every civilized country at any cost. What is the value of money at this time in comparison with the value of souls? I have been shown that the press is powerful for good or evil. This agency can reach and influence a public mind as no other means can. The press, controlled by men who are sanctified to God, can be a power indeed for good in bringing men to the knowledge of the truth. In other lands, I have been shown that the publications already have been doing a work upon some minds in other countries in breaking down the walls of prejudice and superstition. I was shown men and women studying with intense interest papers and a few pages of tracts upon present truth. They would read the evidences so wonderful and new to them and would open their Bibles with a deep and new interest. As subjects of truth that had been dark to them were made plain, especially the light in regard to the Sabbath of the fourth commandment. As they searched the scriptures to see if these things were so, a new light shone upon their understanding. For angels were hovering over them and impressing their minds with the truths contained in the publications they had been reading. Searching with prayer and tears, I saw them holding papers and tracts in one hand and the Bible in the other, while their cheeks were wet with tears and bowing before God in earnest, humble prayer to be guided into all truth, the very thing he was doing for them before they called upon him. And when the truth was received in their hearts, they saw the harmonious chain of truth. The Bible was to them a new book. They hugged it to their hearts with grateful joy, while their countenances were all aglow with happiness and holy joy. These were not satisfied with merely enjoying the light themselves. They began to work for others. Some made great sacrifices for the truth's sake and to help those of the brethren who were in darkness. The way is thus preparing to do a great work in the distribution of tracts and papers in other languages. Life Sketches, page 214 and 215. Books Taken from Shelves It is true that some who buy the books will lay them on the shelf or place them on the parlor table and seldom look at them. Still God has a care for his truth, and the time will come when these books will be sought for and read. Sickness or misfortune may enter the home, and through the tr truth contained in the books, God sends to troubled hearts peace and hope and rest. His love is revealed to them, and they understand the preciousness of the forgiveness of their sins. Thus the Lord cooperates with his self-denying workers. Volume 6, page 313 and 314. Souls brought to Christ. Our publications are now sowing the gospel seed and are instrumental in bringing as many souls to Christ as the preached word. Whole churches have been raised up as a result of their circulation. Review and Herald, June 10, 1880. Even the fragments are precious. We should treat as a sacred treasure every line of printed matter containing present truth. Even the fragments of a pamphlet or of a periodical should be regarded as of value. 
Who can estimate the influence that a torn page containing the truths of the third angel's message may have upon the heart of some seeker after truth? Let us remember that somebody would be glad to read all the books and papers we can spare. Every page is a ray of light from heaven to shine into the highways and the hedges, shedding light upon the pathway of truth. In the miracle of feeding the multitude with a few loaves and fishes, the food was increased as it passed from Christ to those who accepted it. Thus it will be in the distribution of our publications. God's truth, as it is passed out, will multiply greatly. And as the disciples, by Christ's direction, gathered up the fragments which remained that nothing should be lost, so we should treasure every fragment of literature containing the truth for this time. Review and Herald, August 27, 1903. A thousand in one day. God will soon do great things for us if we lie humble and believing at his feet. More than one thousand will soon be converted in one day, most of whom will trace their first convictions to the reading of our publications. Review and Herald, November 10, 1885. When the final warning is given. By thousands of voices all over the earth, the warning will be given. Miracles will be wrought, the sick will be healed, and signs and wonders will follow the believers. Satan also works with lying wonders, even bringing down fire from heaven in the sight of men. Thus the inhabitants of the earth will be brought to take their stand. The message will be carried not so much by argument as by the deep conviction of the Spirit of God. The arguments have been presented, the seed has been sown, and now it will spring up and bear fruit. The publications distributed by missionary workers have exerted their influence, yet many whose minds were impressed have been prevented from fully comprehending the truth or from yielding obedience. Now the rays of light penetrate everywhere, the truth is seen in its clearness. A large number take their stand upon the Lord's side. Great Controversy, page 612. God's plan for proclaiming the message. To us as a people, God has given great light, and he calls upon us to let it shine forth to those in darkness. By us, the light, the power of a living truth, is to be given to the world. From us, there is to shine forth to those in darkness a clear, steady light, kept alive by the power of God. We are charged to use the light given us to create other lights, that our fellow men may rejoice in the truth. Let us not disregard the charge. Suppose that the sun should refuse to shine, what terrible darkness and confusion would result. For us to refuse to let our light shine to those in darkness is to contract guilt, the magnitude of which cannot be computed. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely." These words outline God's plan for the promulgation of the gospel. His instrumentalities, divine and human, are to unite in an effort to save the lost. These souls are to be rescued from the bondage of sin. God calls upon those who have taken his name to obey his orders. All are called to take some part in his work. Transforming Power of Truth it is through the transforming influence of divine grace on human hearts that the power of the word of truth is revealed. The message proclaimed in regions where it has not yet been heard makes an impression on hearts. It seems to have greater power in transforming character than when presented to those who are familiar with its office work. Truth has little power on the hearts of those who walk contrary to it for advantage to themselves. Those who follow a course opposed to its principles. Such ones profess to believe the word of God, but they give no evidence that they are sanctified by it. The truth is to take possession of the will of those who have never before heard it. They will see the sinfulness of sin, and their repentance will be thorough and sincere. The Lord will work upon hearts that in the past have not been appealed to, hearts that heretofore have not seen the enormity of sin. Christ is the only successful antagonist that sin has ever encountered. Let the full light of his life stream into the souls of those who are in darkness. Under the direct power of the gospel, thousands have been converted in a day. When a sinner becomes sensible of the fact that only through Christ can he gain eternal life, 
when he realizes that obedience to God's word is the condition of entrance into the kingdom of God, when he sees Christ as a propitiation for sin, he comes to the Savior in humility and contrition, confessing his sins and seeking forgiveness. His soul is impressed with a sense of the majesty and glory of God. The blessedness of an eternal life of peace and joy and purity is felt so deeply that an entire surrender is made. I am instructed to say that some who outwardly appear the most fully given to sin will, when light flashes into the soul, make most successful workers in places where there are just such sinners as they themselves once were. Written for Canvassers I write this because those engaged in canvassing work and in house-to-house -house labor often meet men and women who are coarse and forbidding in outward appearance, but who, if won to the truth, will be among its most loyal and stanch adherents. The spirit of truth is indeed of value in any church. Those whom the Lord uses may not always have outward polish, but they, if they have integrity of character, the Lord accounts them precious. God's work to increase as end draws near. As the end draws near, the work of God is to increase in full strength and purity and holiness. The workers are to be filled with love for God and for one another. They are to cherish principles of the strictest integrity. When the true keynote is struck, God will reveal himself as a God of mercy and love. Angels of heaven will draw near to the members of the church on earth to aid them in their necessity. Let us ever remember that we are laborers together with God. In this heavenly union we shall carry forward his work with completeness, with singing and rejoicing. In every soul will be kindled the fire of holy zeal. Company after company will leave the dark standard of the foe to come up to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. Workers must gain deeper experience. God's workers must gain a far deeper experience. If they will surrender all to him, he will work mightily for them. They will plant the standard of truth upon fortresses until then held by Satan and with shouts of victory take possession of them. They bear the scars of battle, but there comes to them the comforting message that the Lord will lead them on, conquering and to conquer. When God's servants with consecrated zeal cooperate with divine instrumentalities, the state of things that exist in this world will be changed, and soon the earth will with joy receive her king. Then they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Review and Herald, September 17, 1903. End of the book, Call Porter Ministry.